All right, everybody, this is, I don't know, call it 10.4. Um, it's somewhere between unit 10 and 11. Um, really, it's just kind of helping you up to when we get to unit 11. Okay, so um, there's no notes for this lesson. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over a few of these problems together, and that will be your notes. And then for your homework, you'll finish up the rest of the problems. Okay. So, um, we're going to go over 1, 3, and 5. Two, 4 and 6 are for you. <clears throat> okay. So, when we're talking about multiplying, like, roots, um, one thing that's really cool is when we multiply those together, it's the same thing as doing the square root of 12 times 6. Okay. <clears throat> we can use our calculator um, to simplify that. So, 6 times 12 should give us the square root of 72. And then if you type that into your calculator, you're probably, you're going to get a decimal that never ends and has no pattern. So this is an irrational number. Um, but we still want to simplify these problems. And if you remember, we did this in our first term. Um, we simplified roots. So that's where we do like our factor trees. <clears throat> And we'd say, uh, 72 is the same as 2 times 36. <clears throat> and then we'd keep going on. We'd get 2 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 3. And then we would circle groups. So here is a group of 2s. Here is a group of 3s. Those groups come out in the front. So we'd end up getting 2 times 3 square roots of what's not in a group. So the 2, that 2 that I underlined, is not in a group. Okay, So we'd end up getting 6 square roots of 2. Again, just to remind you where this is coming from, <clears throat> is that we are doing the square root of these numbers. So the square root of... Four, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. And then we're doing the square root of square root of 3 times 3, which is 9. Or sorry, the square root of 9, which gives you 3. Okay, So it's, it's not as easy to kind of explain using my iPad and not being able to see me, but... Again, really what we're doing here is we're doing the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 3 times 3 times the square root of 2. So this is coming from here, this is coming from here, and this is coming from here. So the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. It can't be simplified. So we end up getting 6 square roots of 2. Okay? Hopefully that made more sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay? So always simplify your roots. Um, a big par portion of your homework, you will need to simplify the roots, especially on the back side when we get into the Pythagorean theorem. All right. So... That's a lot of extra work, but hopefully that helped. Now let's look at 3 and 5. So 3, again, if we have roots, we can multiply them just like we did up above. So we'd end up getting the square root of 4. And then with the, the 3s, those are not irrational, so we can multiply those together. So that gives us 9. So we can multiply rational numbers together, and we can multiply irrational numbers together. So here we'd end up getting 9 times 2, or 18. So sometimes you'll get nice numbers, sometimes you'll need to simplify the roots. Alright, and we talked about number 5, so what do you notice between 3 and 5? Um, and a lot of people mention that this is squared, and the other ones don't aren't squared. 
And then we talked about how exponents tell us how many times we multiply the base. So this is exactly the same as number 3. It's just written using exponents. So if you see something, and you'll have something like number 5 on your homework, um, you could write it twice like we did above and, and simplify it that way. Um, <clears throat> or we can also think of it as, you know, we're, we're squaring things. So we're doing 3, 3 squared, and the square root of 2 squared. Right? We can all we can always kind of think of it as distributing exponents, but sometimes we run into issues, especially if you do something like this. So like three plus the square root of two squared, like we cannot our answer is not going to be nine plus two. Okay. Um, we're missing some of the information. Here we would need to write it twice. You won't be running into that today, but just a reminder, okay? So we end up having nine times, and again, the square root and a square, those cancel, they're, it's, they're opposites, okay? Um, so we'll just get nine times two is 18. So as we expected, those are the same, okay? So 2, 4, and 6, those are for you to work on. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by. All right, so now let's go to the Pythagorean Theorem. So just a reminder, the Pythagorean Theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And again, this only applies with right triangles. Okay, so if you look at all of these below, we have these little little right triangle symbols, these little squares, okay, um, telling us that those are 90 degrees. All right, so if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, um, not any side can be A, B, or C, okay? The C has to be your hypotenuse, okay? So and the hypotenuse is always your longest side. It's always across from that 90 degrees. So kind of think about this little 90 degree symbol. It's pointing at the hypotenuse, okay? All right, so that, sometimes that's helpful. So our hypotenuse, C, and then A and B, once you find the hypotenuse, A and B, it doesn't matter which one you choose as A or B. A and B are the legs of the, tri of the right triangle. Um, it doesn't matter which one is which, but the C has to be the hypotenuse. Has to be the hypotenuse. Okay. All right, so let's use that information to answer or to do a couple of these problems, and the rest will be for you. Okay, so again, we want to label the hypotenuse. Start with that always. So the hypotenuse, again, we already kind of wrote that down. This is our C, and then this could be our A, and this could be our B. So we're doing A squared, so 6 squared, plus B squared, which is 8 squared, equals C squared, which here they have it labeled as X, okay? So before you do any solving, like getting X by itself, always simplify as much as you can. So 6 squared would be 36, and then 8 squared is 64. We can combine like terms, they'll give us 100. Now everything is simplified on the left side and the right side, so the last thing we'd want to do is get x by itself. Again, the opposite of squaring is square rooting, so we could cancel those and we'd end up getting x equals 10. Okay, so sometimes your answers will be nice numbers like 10 or 5 or 7, I don't know, any of those types of numbers. These are rational numbers but you will also run into ones that are irrational, and then you're going to need to simplify the root, okay? Um, all right, so there's an example, and then we're also going to look at 17, so it's almost the very last problem.
So again, we want to label the sides starting with the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse again is across from that 90 degrees. So this is our C and then A and B are our other two sides. So A squared, so X squared, plus B squared, so the square root of 14 squared. Sometimes for people forget that part, okay? It looks a little different because our, our side length is an irrational number. It's not like 14, it's the square root of 14, but we still need to square it, okay? Equals C squared, which is four squared. So again, simplify everything that you can. You can't simplify X squared, but we can simplify the square root of 14 squared. Again, those are their opposites, their inverses, they cancel out. So we get plus 14 is equal to, and four times four, 16. Okay, so now everything's simplified. Now we can solve. So we wanna get X by itself. Again, when we're solving, we're doing the opposite of order of operations, the opposite of PEMDAS. So we would add or subtract first. Oops. So we'd get x squared equals 2. And then next would be multiplication or division, but you won't be having any of that with the Pythagorean theorem. Um, there's no parentheses, but there are exponents. So we'd want to, I guess exponents are first anyways. Okay, we'd get x equals the square root of 2. And that's your answer, right? That can't be simplified. We don't want decimals, okay? So we're all done. All right, last thing, I'll let you finish it up, but just some people run into 13. Just realize that this is two square roots of three. And so when we use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we're gonna end up squaring that. So that looks a lot like uh, number five. Okay, so use that as a help if you need. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. Submit your homework on Canvas, um, and we'll see you later.